Good morning. Good morning. Uh, blessed Thanksgiving to you. Uh, as we begin uh, this new season of the year and the colors change, so do our worship times. So this Wednesday will be our first midweek service of the season, and that will be at noon. Uh, we'll repeat it again at 7 o'clock, and we'll do that each Wednesday leading up to Christmas. So we hope you'll be a part of those celebrations. The elementary school joins us at noon, and at 7 o'clock is preceded by a meal. So please be encouraged to just mark that on your calendars and be a part of the Advent celebrations that uh, now ensue for the next four weeks. We also would like to include in our prayers a number of uh, requests for people who are suffering from illness and for those who are expecting children. And if we could have that prayer request up, uh, we also would like you to fill out any additional prayer information. You got a four by four card as you uh, came into the service and on the back side of it, if you would fill that in, uh, any um, prayer request you may have and your attendance and put it in the collection plate at the end of the service. I'd appreciate it. A number of people celebrating baptismal birthdays today. Uh, Jonathan's father we've added to the list under healing. Uh, he is in hospice, and his name is David, and is not doing well or expected to live long. So we want to keep the whole family in our prayers. Jonathan celebrating his baptismal birthday and his dad uh, preparing to receive the victory is our, that is ours in Jesus Christ. So let's keep them in our prayers. In addition to those prayers, Lucy... A uh, new addition to a family we pray for. Uh, this last month's uh, emphasis on the grace of giving, we pray. Uh, our uh, Christmas store effort and uh, Metro Lutheran Ministries, we want to pray for. And then uh, for those who have received today in the membership, uh, we include them in our prayers. And you'll see that their uh, photos and bios are in the information you received this morning as you came in. And then for those number of people that are in need of healing, and finally, those that are anticipating the birth of children. If you have other prayer requests, just at the bottom of that 4 by 4 card, include them there and then place them in the collection plate at the end of service. And we would appreciate that very, very much. Those, I believe, are our announcements. Uh, if you would rise and share the peace of the Lord with each other, I'd appreciate it. We continue our worship with the invocation. We, are, we worship the line of Judah and the root of David. The of heaven and earth. We praise the Lamb of God, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was made man. We worship the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. This Advent season, we come before the one true and living Lord. Forgive our sins, remember your love, instruct us with your word. This Advent season, we wait with eager anticipation. We wait for your salvation, we wait for your direction, we wait for your coming. In the great name of the, of the soon and coming King, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let this family be the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We confess. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips are reluctant to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Merciful Lord, set us free from a past we dare not repeat and cannot change. Open us to the future path your grace and inspire the change within us. By your word and spirit, cause us to grow. Bethany, it is with my pleasure that I get to share with you that you are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, and the peace of the Lord be with you. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah, the second chapter. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, said concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us up to the mountain of our Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing. Our New Testament reading for today is from Romans chapter 13. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently, as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, non-sexual immorality and debauchery, non-dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. And do not think about how to gratif gratify the desires of the sinful nature. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Please rise.
Amen. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 24th chapter, and the focus of our meditation. Jesus says, No one knows about the day or hour, not even the angels, nor the Son, only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken, the other will be left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch. He would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect him. And this is the good news of the coming of the King of Kings. We pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and may the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. How many of you by show of hands know this character? It dates you. This character was created in 1949. And those of you who raised your hands know his name. Vicar doesn't, I bet. Not at all. His name is Mr. Magoo. A cartoon character. His legal name, I believe, is John, but J. Quincy Magoo. He was an elderly, wealthy, short of stature, retiree that had a real problem with nearsightedness. <laughs> Mr. Magoo. And each episode, he found himself in situations because of that nearsightedness. And no matter what the predicament was or the help that he was offered, he either was too stubborn or too unaware of the dangers that were presented before him in every episode. And as a result, did not consider it a change in his life, something he was willing to embrace. The Advent season is the opportunity for those of us who are not as nearsighted as Mr. Magoo to make some changes, to prepare ourselves for what this season reminds us 
will be the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Advent is not just a preparation for Christmas, which it is, but more importantly, it is a reorientation in anticipation of the ultimate coming of our Lord in glory with the angels and the archangels. Like in the days of Noah, so Jesus begins the text for today. Or if you will, like in the days of Lot, as much as things seem to change, they remain the same. People doing the same old, same old things day in and day out. If there is to be something different, doesn't it make sense we have to do something different? If we are to be prepared for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, doesn't that suggest change? A reorientation? A prioritization of your life in a clearer more precise focus upon the anticipation of our Lord and Savior's return? Just a question. Jesus begins the text saying, like in the days of Noah, people went about their business, eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. They did the same old things day in and day out. Complaining, I'm sure, at times about the need for change and arguing at times about the change that they perceived was happening, but by and large, not changing. Not altering their behaviors. It does seem reasonable that if you want something to be different, something different about you is required. We spent a month inviting you to do something different with your time, with your talents, with your treasures. And many chose the same old, same old response. How can there be change if in us we're not willing to embrace it? As in the days of Noah, people were doing the same old things, eating and drinking, buying and selling, building and planting. And as much as things changed, they didn't. Behaviors remained pretty much static. But in the days of Lot, as also in the days of Noah, when Lot walked out of that city and Noah climbed up into that boat, Everything changed. Everything changed. For those that were traveling away from the city, everything changed. For those that remained in the city, everything changed. For those around that boat, everything changed. And for those in that boat, change as well. How could they have not known? Whether we we're reflecting on Lot or Noah, how could they have not known? How could they have not seen this anomaly in the middle of the desert? Who builds a boat of that magnitude in the middle of a desert? And people not see, not question, not wonder. Why a boat? 
And then to see the parade of these animals coming by them and not question, isn't that odd? What does this mean? And then the brewing of a storm. How can you not see it on the horizon and question what's about to happen? How could they have not known and not have seen? Were there that many Mr. Magoos in society at that time? Were they that nearsighted and so unaware that they did not perceive the signs that were laid before their very eyes. There is quite a feeding frenzy occurring on social media right now, unlike I have seen in my lifetime. Protestants are attacking evangelicals. Catholics are attacking Protestants. Christians are consuming each other in criticism. And the atheists, smiling. How can you not see? The defection from the Christian church, unlike it's ever been recorded. The number of people who have become part-time Christians who have taken the third commandment and said, doesn't apply to me. I don't need worship. And I don't need the community of God's elect. And I surely don't need the means of grace in order to carve out for myself a way to salvation. How can you not see the empty pews? the unbiblical responses and the behaviors all predicted in Scripture. It's not a boat. It is not a parade of animals. But there is a storm on the horizon. And unless you're Mr. Magoo, how can you not see it? And ask the question, what does this mean? Is it possible to be so nearsighted or so self-absorbed that you would be oblivious to what's happening and you would dismiss the warning signs that are around you everywhere? Jesus says, you who have eyes to see and ears to hear, aren't you asking yourself the question, what does this mean? But then it happens. It happened in the day of Lot. It happened in the day of Noah. Everything blew up. And I Googled a long time to try to find the episode or the segment of the cartoon that follows this particular one. Because in every cartoon, Mr. Magoo is traveling down these high wires. And always when he gets to this point, what happens? There's this huge explosion. There was this huge explosion in Sodom and Gomorrah leveled the cities. The destruction at the time of Noah was complete. And there's hardly a culture that doesn't have a story about that moment, this flood event. And it will happen. And Mr. Magoo will not live to see another day or another frame of a cartoon. In a twinkling of an eye, there will be this massive change. And the Lord with angels and archangels and the trumpet call of heaven will come down and divide the sheep 
from the goats, the part-time Christians, the ones who claim an affiliation but have denied the scripture or the relevance of community as Christians, and those who, when people were hungry, fed them. Naked, clothed them. In prison, they were visited. It will happen. And these four weeks of Advent are an opportunity for us as Christians to embrace the change that needs to happen in our life, to prepare us for that moment when everything will blow up. The springs of the deep burst forth. The heavens, floodgates, opened up. And everything as they knew it would be no more. So it will be at the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With the rush of waves, with the hail of brimstone, God ultimately delivered to those peoples the punishment that he foretold would be theirs based on their choices. People are making choices today and turning their backs on the unmerited grace of our God. It won't be as it was in the day of Lot or Noah, but it will be complete and comprehensive. And he has promised it. But the message repeated throughout biblical history, not just connected to those two events that surrounded Lot and Noah, but in anticipation of his second coming, the message is very simple. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't put off for tomorrow what God offers you at the foot of the cross today. Today's same old, same old thing will abruptly come to an end. So don't put off what he has purchased and won for you at the cross of Calvary. What he freely invites you to embrace and what he offers those of you who have eyes to see and ears to hear the good news of his love, his grace, and his mercy. Call it choice. Don't call it chance. Call it change. And he invites us each into it this season. If you have ears to hear it. And if you're not Magoo and you have eyes to see it, like in the days of Lot, like in the days of Noah, the Son of Man will come in his glory. And we confess that in each of the creeds, who's coming again to judge the living and the dead. No one will know the day or the hour. Jesus says the angels don't know. He admitted he didn't know. But he did acknowledge the Father does. The day will come when we least expect it. When we find ourselves distracted, absorbed, or unavailable to be in his presence. Jesus tells a story that connects to this thought. It's a story of the ten virgins. You remember it, the five wise and the five foolish. And if you remember nothing else about the story, the two outcomes of that story are be watchful and be ready. Are you? Or have you been that part-time Christian who find just a few hours a week that you can devote to issues of faith, who find it inconvenient to be challenged to join in a ministry and to promote the mission and ministry of God and his kingdom in this place, 
who assume someone else will do it for you. Someone else will prepare the elements at the altar. Someone else will greet people when they come in the church. Someone else will reach out to the unchurched and invite them in. Someone else will teach the little ones. Be watchful. Be ready. Mr. Magoo always finds the manhole. And the odd thing about that is that every time he steps into that void, there is always a worker at the bottom of the hole who's wearing a hard hat, who happens to look up exactly at the moment that Mr. Magoo is walking over that void, and Mr. Magoo, totally unaware, steps on his head and moves on in life. There are many today who will take that step into the void and be totally unaware that God in his grace has provided for you a chance not to fall, an opportunity to move on with life. But with that saving grace comes a call to open your eyes and to live a life not oblivious, but that's holy and godly. And in conformity with the gospel of Jesus Christ, with your eyes fixed upon him, looking forward to his coming. Through the work of the sanctifying spirit within us, he would invite you into transformation, a change. From glory into glory, a change. We've all heard the cartoon quip about how many Lutherans it takes to change a light bulb. And the response is, change? <laughs> the very nature of our faith is to embrace change. A transformational change. Not from the same old, same old experience but into glory and into the likeness of God's Son. A renewal, a regeneration, and the opportunity to, to take our stand, resist the devil in all of his works, refusing to be deceived, and resisting any efforts to be distracted. Our eyes, our gaze upon Jesus. The good news for us, good Christians, and the good news for those of you whose eyesight has dimmed spiritually, is that we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe he rose from the dead. We believe that he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and we believe he is coming again to glory to judge the living and the dead. And we believe that when he returns, he will take us by the hand and we will be with him forever and ever. It's this faith that Jesus encourages us today to encourage one another with, with the words of God's powerful presence and his imminent coming. And the admonition that we, with eyes wide open, run the race before us, knowing the victory is ours in Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And may the peace that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in faith until life everlasting. Amen. Join with me in the confession of faith. Please rise. We confess. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. 
Amen. I'd like to invite those who will be received into membership to come up forward with me and the rest of you to be seated for a moment. We had an incredibly wonderful time uh, these last seven weeks together and uh, in the opportunity of searching the scriptures, getting to know each other better. Uh, when we started our class together, uh, Lynn in the front office was asking people for their names and their phone numbers and addresses. And Christine says, can't we put something else on this sheet other than our names, phone numbers, and um, email addresses. So Lynn took the challenge, and the next week she says, what's your favorite candy bar? And God bless Lynn. She went out and she bought them all their favorite candy bar, which is <laughs> neat. Uh, some of which uh, that were in that class are not able to be with us today. We welcome them all in. Dear friends in Christ, the members of our congregation are happy that you are desiring to become a part of our Christian fellowship. Our Lord Jesus Christ bids us to confess him before men with the promise that when we confess him before our Father in heaven, he will confess us as well. That we may rejoice in your good confession, I ask you in the presence of this congregation, do you accept and confess the teachings of our church as you've learned to know them from Luther's small catechism to be faithful and true to the word of God? If so answer, I do. I do. As a member of the church, do you intend to continue in this confession of the church, attend corporate worship, make diligent use of the means of grace, and lead a righteous and godly life? If answered, I do so intend with the help of God. Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given the congregation with your prayers, your time, your treasures, and your talents, the very thing we've been talking about here in November? If so, answer, I will with the help of God. Upon this, your promise, I, in the name of the congregation, extend to you the right hand of fellowship and love. I acknowledge you as members of our church, invite you to receive the Lord's Supper and participate in all the other blessings of salvation which God has given his church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you. Would you welcome him into our congregation with a round of applause? had to be seated. Boy, Brandon, you got your hands full. <laughs> we continue with our worship and prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the chance to be in your house, be in your presence, and share in the community of your, your people, God. God, we lift up all those that are remembering their baptismal birthday this day, especially Jonathan, Molly, Zach, John, Ryan, Kurt, Eva, Julia, Anne, Jack, Evan, Megan, Max, and Lori. God, as they remember the baptismal birthday, remind us that we are saved through the holy waters of your baptism, God, that we are part of your family through this precious gift. Lord, in your mercy. God, as we remember those who were baptized, we lift up Lucy, who was born to Evan and Stephanie. God, we give you thanks for Lucy's birth. Bring her to the waters of baptism, God. Be with Evan and Stephanie as they are parents to Lucy. Help them to raise her to love and fear you, God, to be part of your family and know the grace and joy that comes with knowing you. Lord, in your mercy. God, we thank you for this chance to learn about the grace of giving, to learn about how we can give our time, give our resources, give our treasures to you, God. Remind us that everything we have is yours, that we, we want to be changed by you, God, that we want to be changed to serve you better and grow your kingdom. Help us to do that. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift up the MLM Christmas store. We thank you for this mission of the month. We thank you for the impact that they have in the community. Bless their Bless this store, bless the community that they serve, and help them share your love, share Christ's love with all those that come to it. Lord, in your mercy. God, we also lift up the Advent services as this new church season begins. 
Help it to bring those to your, your altar, God. As we look forward to this Christmas season, as we look forward to celebrating the birth of your son, Jesus, to this world, God, remind us to look forward in our lives, to look forward to the future that we have to look forward to with Christ's return. Lord, in your mercy. God, we also give thanks for all the new members here at Bethany. Thank you for bringing them to this church. Thank you for bringing them to our family here at Bethany. As we remember, as we look at them, at the family here at Bethany, remind us that we're all family in Christ, that we're all united through Christ's life, death, and resurrection. Help us look forward to the day where you return, and we are one unified family in your word. Lord, in your mercy. God, we lift up all of those who need healing this day, especially Ilsa, Jeff, Donna, Dave, and Jack. God, be, be with them. Be with all those doctors, all the nurses, all those helping them through this healing process. God, we ask that you bless them, strengthen them, encourage them, and remind that ultimately we are saved through Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And God, we lift up those for whom are expecting, especially Alex and Will, Brad and Kelsey, Stefan and Sarah, and Matt and, and Andrea. God, be with them as they get ready to welcome a new son or daughter to their household. I will be ready to serve you, God, to raise their children, to love you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, we lift up all of those for whom we pray in your precious son, Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Please rise for the benediction. The benediction comes from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Amen.